So we're talking about the vocabulary in Unit 15, and there are some really basic new verbs with difficult principal parts because they're verbs which um, have uh, um, create principal parts from different roots. So let's look at them. Um, there's one of them that doesn't, but the other three especially, which are very common words in Greek, do. So the first one is the verb hyreo, um, which means to seize someone, someone or something it, aggressively. To, it gets translated take, but it, it does it, it means in a hostile way. Mm -hmm. So capture, take, okay. Um, what is important also is that in the middle it has a special meaning, which is not take for oneself, but choose, okay. It, so, so that's kind of uh, hyreo my. Um, in its form. So it's, this is an epsilon contract verb in the, in the present system. Um, and then the principal parts uh, are, are hyreso, which you might not expect, but that's okay. That's a regular regular contract verb future, hyreso. The, the aorist comes from another root, and it's the, the verb is halon with an ei. <coughs> The underlying vowel under the ei is h e l, so so the infinitive, for example, from the root halon, which means I seized, um, is helene. Okay, with a, a, it gives you the aorist infinitive. It's a second aorist. Notice with the accent and the fact that the ending is not su but on. Okay, so it's our aorists that are inflected like imperfects. Um, so that means I seized, halon. Heireka is consistent with the root. So it's he with an a h and an iota subscript. So that's the, the augmented form of hi. And then the, the long vowel, the eta, and the ka. So that's what you would expect from hirao. Mm -hmm. The same is true of heire mai. You're going to have the iota subscript. And, and then hire, or heirethane, sorry, um, is a little bit weird because of the vowel. Okay, you'd expect mm -hmm. heirethen with an eta, but you got an epsilon there. You need an iota uh, subscript. Yeah. Okay, so those are the principal parts of hireo. So the real one is the aorist, but it's an extremely common verb with lots and lots of compounds. Okay, so it's really worth learning this verb that means seize or capture. Yeah. Um, it gets um, tricky with this, the unaugmented root for your subjunctives yeah, and participles. Exactly. It's hard and, to identify. Yeah, hello and... Yeah. and Heloime, right? It's mm -hmm. all over the place in real Greek and in compounds, right? Up, hire, o, take away, and stuff like that. Yep. Good point. Okay, so the second verb that's new in this lesson is the verb to follow, hepomai, okay? Which isn't so bad. It's, it's again, a common word because following is a basic verbal idea. The future is hepsomai, which is what you'd expect. But the aorist is the second aorist, okay? This is a deponent verb. So the future, the aorist is hepsomai, um, and then the aorist is hespomain. Hepsomai, so that's that's predictable. And then hespomain, with an epsilon, not an aorist. Oh. Okay? Jeez. Yeah. Hespomain. So w the reason that it looks so weird is that the actual root is asterisk sep, sep. Okay, mm. it's the same root as Latin sequor that was a qu that became a p, p. Okay, mm. right? We're talking about those the yes, other day. Yeah. Yep. So so um, and so the root of 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 uh, the aorist is se spamain. You got a reduplicative uh. or an old reduplicative aorist. There used to be such things. Anyhow, <laughs> um, here now we got two more, and these are going to be harder. Um, this is the verb to see, which we should have learned a long time ago, but take a look at how complicated the principal parts of it are. So the, the, the present system is based on horao, okay? That's an alpha contract, but it originally comes from wora, or there was a w in Greek, so the, that h reflects an old w. But that means that you need to look at the imperfect. When you augmented that form with a w, you got this, he oron. So with the inflection, you want to write that in? The, the, uh, the imperfect is he, with a, a, a rough breathing. Yeah. And then omega, rho, omega, omega. nu, an accent on, this, on, the, on the first omega. So that's I was seeing, okay? That's a weird way of augmenting horao. Mm -hmm. But it was 
Laura also was a wool, okay? And then when the W disappeared, you got an H, okay? Um, so that means so that's that's the present system. The future is from a different root, opsami. Um, this is the root, for example, in in the in the word ophthalmology, which or ophthalmos is one of the Greek words for eye. Mm -hmm. um, that's opt to see. Um, the aorist is from another root, adon. Okay, e i t o n. This is another. One of these adon, the underlying vowel is the I, is only an iota. It's id. So the mm -hmm. aorist. This is a second aorist. Notice, the aorist infinitive is going to be idain. Okay, for example. Um, with a, there you go. So that means to see. Right. Yep. So you're going to see just like you're going to see helene from hirao. You're going to say idain from harao. Okay. Um, Adon, the perfect is heoraka, okay, heoraka, heoramai, or there are two forms, that's the newer one, okay, omai, oh oh, with two mu's. Mm -hmm. So this is from the root of opsamai, opmai, okay, you augmented it, P has become a mu, okay. You actually see that. It's got a circumflex, yeah, exactly. Um, and then ophane is definitely from the root of opsamai. So ophane. I wonder if some of those things are real. So there's a verb whose principal parts are constituted from the ha root, the op root, and the root of adon is the root of wid, as in wid, video in Latin and video in English, okay? The w has disappeared and become nothing <laughs> okay but it's, it's also the root of uh, wid the word is wid in English it gives you uh, words having to do with knowledge because this root originally meant in Indo-European either see or no okay and we'll learn the forms that mean no so they're lexically different in Greek some some forms mean see and some forms mean no and they never overlap anymore but in English we have wid wit for example is from this root Wisdom, and Latin. You can see they have the same root wid, which means to see, not to mm -hmm. not to know. All right, last last one in this series is the verb ferro, okay, which means. Let's see if I remember these principal parts. <laughs> yeah. You getting tired? <laughs> no, I haven't looked at these principal parts okay. in many years. So ferro is a an Indo-European word that it occurs in I think of every known Indo-European language, but only in the present system. There's only a, a, and it means to carry something that can't move by itself, okay? In Indo-European, you have these two kinds of properties, the stuff that could move by itself and stuff that it couldn't. So what you do, ferro is the means to move things that, that you have to carry, okay? And ago means move things that can move by themselves. So these are two basic Indo-European words that mean the same thing, but about different kinds of stuff. So we translate ago as lead, but it means move stuff that can move. And ferro is carry, but it means move stuff that can't move. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So there's Pharaoh. That's fine. That's that's. But in the future comes from another root. Okay, nice. Move stuff that can't move by itself. Sorry. <laughs> Beautiful. You can. So the that. future is from another root, oiso, uh, or oisomai. I don't know whether they teach us the the just oiso is fine. Okay, so that's I will carry from a different root. The aorist is. Two, there are two forms, an and con, eta, nu, epsilon, gamma, kappa, o, n, which is a second aorist, um, mm -hmm. but it also gets renewed into a first aorist, an and ka, because people don't know this verb anymore. Okay, um, so the newer one is the second one. We probably should have switched it around, but you got to have a second or a first aorist. It's not; they're not alternatives. In a given author, you'll have one or the other. So it's not like the two aorists of histame that coexist and have separate meanings. Mm -hmm. It's one or the other. So that's the that's the aorist. The perfect is anenacha, uh, monstrous thing. Anen, and an was the first vowel is an epsilon, not an eta. So it's one of these reduplicative uh, things with a, with a stem that begins with a vowel. Anenegmai is the perfect middle, and anegmai, 
uh, we wait n a neg not a neta the second neta uh, is an epsilon. Yep. So yeah. a neg. neg my okay and nekthane is the aorist passive. I was carried. A, a no, it's a nekthane. No, you got too many words there. I have too many. Yeah, you you haven't reviewed these for nope. a while, uh, Lucy. So it's a eta. Yeah. Nu, epsilon, chi theta, eta, nu. There you go. There it is. Okay, so that's, I was carried. <laughs> I have been carried, I have carried, I carry, I will carry. All right, um, so much for the verbs, okay? Um, the other words in this lesson, well, there's a, there is another verb which is important. We're going to use it in the next one, and that's the verb isthanomai, which we get the English word aesthetics from. It means to feel or perceive. Notice that it has a second error, so it's isthanomai, isthesomai. Okay, we can do this one too. <laughs> this is an ano verb. Okay, so isthesomai, you're going to lose the ano outside of the present system, so it's isthesomai. Um, and then asthame <laughs> with an eta iota subscript, and no ano. So there's your. Um, Aorist, and then you have a, a, a perfect middle form. It's really five ace themi, no, no others. Okay, ace themi. Excellent. So that means that I perceived. Okay, and uh, the book tells you correctly and importantly that you can have either the genitive or the dative of it. So the genitive is the part of genitive, with like the verb to hear, I heard of you. Okay, and the same is true of isthanomai, if several of you are perceiving something, you're having a part of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, a, it's a general perception word. It can, doesn't mean hear or see. It's just sort of vaguely uh, uh, activate your senses in some way. All right. Um, most of the other words are words that are done in the grammar of this lesson. For example, there's I go and sue, the words for I and you and we and us. There is the verb to be, um, a me, but notice for the verb to be that you get two other, they, besides from be, they give you two other forms. They give you esti with an accent. I'm going to put this down on the thing. So we get the word esti with an accent in the third person singular, okay? Not an accent on the i, on the last syllable, um, and that can be have a new movable, okay? Um, and, and this is what's called the existential use of the verb to be. This is the sense of, this word means there is, there exists, okay? Whereas the other form without the accent means X is something, right? Mm -hmm. It's the so-called copulative uh, form of the verb to be, right? Um, this this uh, accentuation rule is something that probably came in rather late. Plato, for example, can't distinguish conceptually between the existential and the copulative form of the verb to be. He doesn't know that there are different things. For us it seems intuitive, but we learned it. <laughs> anyway, all right, so, um, and then there's also ex este, a compound of este, and there are several of these, but this is the one with the preverb ek or ex, and it means it is possible. Okay, it's what's called an impersonal verb, that is it never has a, an, a person as a subject, it can only, a subject can only be it, it can never mean he is possible or she, or you, it's only third person singular, okay? And, and you can say it is possible for you to do something, okay? Mm -hmm. And you have an infinitive to complete the meaning. We'll learn more about those things. Um, there, we also learn um, this relative pronoun, um, hoyas, hoya hoyon, okay? Which means uh, of a kind which, um, this is an important word, hoyas, hoya, Hoyan. So we had hoya as a conjunction, meaning since, remember? Okay, this is a different, this is the, the, the pronoun from which it comes. So it's of a, of a, of a sort which. It's a, very, a special kind of relative pronoun. Um, and it occurs as a relative pronoun, um, with that kind of clunky meaning. But more often than not, it occurs in an idiom which the book gives you, which is hoyas plus te plus the verb to be, hoyas te eime, um, which literally means I am of which kind, or which kind of thing I am, but it's an idiom that means I am able, 
okay, or I can, and governs an infinitive. You can say plus infinitive, yep. Poyasta eme is I am of such a kind as to be able to do something, mm -hmm. all right? Very common usage in real Greek. Um, there are some others, besides from, aside from hoyos, there's poyos, which is the interrogative form of hoyos. That means of which kind, question mark, all right? Um, let's see. And lastly, the, the lesson teaches you toyutos, um, which is a demonstrative of this type. So we've got hoyos, poyos, and toyutos. Um, toyutos is, means of this kind, okay? So it's a little bit more precise uh, and elaborated in your circumflex over the u. Toyutas, toyu, toyaute. Okay, you're going to have the same rule about ut and out as you have for autos. Toyutas, toyaute, uh, and toyuta, or toyutan. This one's getting absorbed into the newer neuter ending. So you see both of those for the neuter, for the circumflex over the ou. That means of this kind, of this kind. Okay, the demonstrative. Um, the last thing we want to talk about is compounds of the verb ferro, of which the verb gives you two: um, dia ferro and sum ferro. Dia ferro means to be different from something, mm. and sum ferro is mainly an impersonal verb, but it means to be advantageous. Okay, a kind of interesting concept. Mm -hmm. So most often you say sum ferry, it is advantageous to do such and such a thing. Um, and Greeks talk about ta sum feron, that which is advantageous. Okay, uh, attributive participle, a very common usage in Greek. All right. Um, let's 